Picture Book of Martin Luther King Jr. by David A. Adler, illustrated by Robert Casilla. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of America's great leaders. He was a powerful speaker, and he spoke against laws which kept black people out of many schools and jobs. He led protests and marches demanding fair laws for all people. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin's father was a pastor. His mother had been a teacher. Martin had an older sister, Willie Christine, and a younger brother, Alfred Daniel. Young Martin liked to play baseball, football, and basketball. He liked to ride his bicycle and to sing. He often sang in his father's church. Martin, center with his brother Alfred Daniel, left, and his sister Willie Christine, right. Young Martin played in his backyard with his friends. One day he was told that two of his friends would no longer play with him because they were white and he was black. Martin cried. He didn't understand why the color of his skin should matter to anyone. Martin's mother told him that many years ago, black people were brought in chains to America and sold as slaves. She told him that long before Martin was born, the slaves had been set free. However, there were still some people who did not treat black people fairly. Atlanta, where Martin lived, and elsewhere in the United States, there were white-only signs. Black people were not allowed in some parks, pools, hotels, restaurants, and even schools. Blacks were kept out of many jobs. Martin learned to read at home before he was old enough to start school. All through his childhood, he read books about black leaders. Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, George Washington Carver. Martin was a good student. He finished high school two years early and was just 15 when he entered Morehouse College in Atlanta. At college, Martin decided to become a minister. After Martin was graduated from Morehouse, he studied for a doctorate at Boston University. While he was there, he met Coretta Scott. She was studying music. They fell in love and married. In 1954, Martin Luther King Jr. began his first job as a pastor in Montgomery, Alabama. The next year, Rosa Parks, a black woman, was arrested in Montgomery for sitting in the whites-only section of a bus. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a protest. Blacks throughout the city refused to ride the buses. Dr. King said, There comes a time when people get tired of being kicked about. One night, while Dr. King was at a meeting, someone threw a bomb into his house. Martin's followers were angry. They wanted to fight. Martin told them to go home peacefully. We must love our white brothers, he said. We must meet hate with love. The bus protest lasted almost a year. When it ended, there were no more white-only sections on buses. Dr. King decided to move back to Atlanta in 1960. There, he continued to lead peaceful protests against white-only waiting rooms, lunch counters, and restrooms. He led many marches for freedom. In 1963, Dr. King led the biggest march of all, the March on Washington. More than 200,000 black and white people followed him. I have a dream, he said in his speech. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. 
The next year, in 1964, Dr. King was awarded one of the greatest honors any man can win, the Nobel Peace Prize. Country was changing. New laws were passed. Blacks could go to the same schools as whites. They could go to the same stores, restaurants, and hotels. White-only signs were against the law. Dr. King told his followers to protest peacefully, but there were some riots and some violence. Then, in April 1968, Dr. King went to Memphis, Tennessee. He planned to march so black and white garbage workers would get the same pay for the same work. On April 4th in Memphis, Dr. King stood outside his motel room. Another man, James Earl Ray, was hiding nearby. He pointed a rifle at Dr. King. He fired the gun. An hour later, Dr. King was dead. Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed of a world free of hate, prejudice, and violence. Carved on the stone which marks his grave are the words, I'm free at last.